Oh, Shabbat Shalom, guys. Uh, I'm here to do a video. I'm thinking about Shabbat Shalom, but uh, I mean Shalom Shalom. Uh, I've been taking a few days off, as I told you guys I would. So I'm here today because there's so many things are happening. And I wanted to come and kind of share some things today. This is Sunday, the 18th, uh, beginning of Hanukkah in Jerusalem. And uh, we did Hanukkah this week, but some people do it on different calendars, so that's fine. But uh, we're going to be talking about the one going on today in Jerusalem, uh, Hanukkah, a little bit. Uh, going to go to Wally Tron and let him talk about it a little bit. Uh, going to be playing a wonderful song from uh, Barry and Bethal over in... Um, over there uh they sung walls of walls on jerusalem uh because you know we are focusing on the world the world is focusing on jerusalem focusing on the world events going on right now a lot of world events going on i'm just looking at that uh north korea uh got some kind of uh what you call them missiles that can reach now uh they got russia is threatening they got all kind of threats coming uh, I do want to come here and share today uh, a message coming from Kilpatrick. Uh, his message today was very uplifting. So I'm going to be sharing his message for 2023. Uh, and we're going to get into Revelation 12 a little bit, talk about it, because I really think we are coming to the time of the wilderness uh, experience, okay? Uh, as I say, the woman, uh, in, the woman uh, was taken in the wilderness, and I think we are approaching that time. Uh, and we have all these things going on with California. I know Dutch Sense mentioned today about a quake hit. Uh, California really deep here. Uh, I think Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Friday into Sabbath, whatever. But we got a lot of things going on. So they're looking for the big one. And I don't know if this is going to be the year. But I told you guys I had a vision about it. Uh, a dream about it. A dream, not a vision. A dream about it. Uh, about this big quake. Uh, after the holidays had passed, like Halloween and Thanksgiving, and then they changed the time back to the standard time. And so I don't know if this is going to be the event that hit before 2023. I don't know. we watching and praying, people. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and play a song coming from uh, Barry and Bethal. Let me get into my, uh, uh, my, uh, my stuff on the screen first here. Uh, click subscribe, like bell, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the like button, click the notification bell. Uh, uh, so I'm hoping that you guys having a wonderful Sunday. Uh, I know it's cold in Colorado. I know all over the maps of the United States seem like it's cold. I've been watching the news this afternoon, seem like it's really cold, a lot of snow everywhere. Uh, so stay warm wherever you are. I be praying for the homeless people this time of year all the time, that they don't be outside uh, in this cold, okay? So I hope you're supporting the homeless people in your area. Uh, if not, you can always contribute for us to support the homeless people. I do contribute over the California area, all in Colorado, all over uh, different parts of the nation uh, here. Uh, we try to support the homeless people. So uh, let me go ahead and get on over here to a song, the one I was talking about, Berin Batya Sagal. Uh, on the walls of Jerusalem. And then we will be getting into uh, the news a little bit. Uh, I know some news coming from my friend in Florida, uh, Lewis in Florida, and, uh, and look at some other little news. Not a whole lot of news, because uh, I want to get into this message by Kilpatrick. And then we're going to just go. I'm not going to try to be a long, long video today, people. I just wanted to come and let you know I've been praying for you, uh, praying for all the events going on, watching the news. I've been watching the news, watching the news. Even if I'm resting, I'm watching the news. Uh, so uh, let me go ahead and just get onto the song right now. Okay, hold on here. Mute this out. Thank you. 
2022. We have a short update for you guys uh, today about uh, Russia's deployment, third deployment of their YARS nuclear missile. So what you're looking at on your screen is the mobile version of the YARS intercontinental multi-warhead nuclear missile. I don't know how uh, many uh, of these missiles that they have, but I want to show you a, a small video of a recent drill. I think just in the last two or three days, uh, they are getting ready. Um, they practice a lot, but let me go ahead and show you uh, what has happened here. Let me go to the, uh, the screen here and play this for you. But uh, these missiles uh, are the updated version. Um, actually, it's a new missile of the Topol M missile. And these have multiple warheads that can uh, avoid detection and, uh, you know, kind of uh, avoid our missile defense system. So let me go ahead and play this video for you. Uh, this is what is actually uh, transpired in Russia uh, the last couple of days. So let me mute my mic and I'll play this uh, short video for you. Наш гвардий полковник, агрегаты БО ракетного комплекса совершили марш. Техническая позиция ракетной дивизии в пункт поставлен дислокации. Завести агрегаты боевого ракетного комплекса на боевую стартовую позицию. So I wanted to show you that short video. Uh, this is um, what the Russians have uh, been doing the last couple of days uh, on their uh, on their land, folks. They um, I don't know if they just keep sending a message. You know, a lot of people say Russia is just bluffing, but you know, it only takes one time. It only takes uh, one time for the uh, the Russians not to bluff, and then uh, we have a serious situation in the world. But um, these missiles, if you look at these missiles, uh, there's a lot of people that want to trash the Russian uh, military uh, hardware. But, folks, the United States doesn't have mobile nuclear missiles. Most of our missiles are in the silos. They do have uh, ones on submarines, and um, uh, they have the ones that they, uh, you know, some can carry on ships. But uh, Russia is one of the few countries that does have mobile nuclear missiles. North Korea does. I think China does. But um, Russia has some of the best missile forces. But anyway, I just wanted to show you this short video. Let's go ahead and read the article. Uh, this is coming in from Hal Turner. I know a lot of people love Hal Turner. Uh, Russia deploys third nuclear warhead missile. So this information is coming in today. It says, last week, the Russian Ministry of Defense released videos of two separate YARS nuclear ICBMs being loaded into silos. It turns out there was a third in the Bologoski region. Russia's message to the West is clear. In the region from the Strategic Missile Forces, the Missile Regiment 
of a mobile YARS took up combat duty, the third deployment of such systems in a few days. The YARS, which is being put into combat, is replacing the Topol mobile missile systems. The location in the Bolgorsky uh, region is shown on the map below uh, relative to the rest of the Europe. So this is the map. You can see a little red uh, dot here. You have Estonia, Latvia, Finland, Norway. It is uh, north, uh, looks like uh, northwest of Moscow. Belarus is down here. Ukraine is down here. So probably these missiles are probably for Finland, Norway, maybe uh, these countries over here uh, in the area. So there's the video here. So I will leave all of these links in the description box. My name is Luis, and God bless every single one of you. Today is December 17, 2022, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. Guys, we have some huge information coming out, some very important stuff here, and it says the Bear Talks target Yellowstone National Park. And yes, it is a super volcano. So guys, what they're talking about here is that the Bear should drop a N-U-K-E on Yellowstone. That's some very important stuff there, guys. Uh, so it says here, talk show host on the Bear TV network. We're openly discussing using a smart, guys, that is a powerful, powerful nuke right there. A smart nuke with a single monoblock uh, 100 megaton warhead to target the super volcano beneath Yellowstone National Park causing a super eruption to wipe out the sleeping giant. Well, that's not a smart idea because that would literally block the sun, not only for the sleeping giant, but the entire atmosphere will be impacted. The entire world will be impacted. Not a very smart idea from the, uh, what is it, talk host? I don't know his name. I don't know if his name pops up, but uh, not a smart idea. Here's the thing. It would take out the sleeping giant. Yes, it would take out the sleeping giant, but it would take out crops. It would take out everything. The atmosphere would be impacted. Uh, the water will be impacted. There will be cam uh, con contamination uh, throughout the entire world. So it's not a good idea to nuke Yellowstone. It's, it's, it's not a good idea. Absolutely not. So that's what the best uh, TV station are saying that, uh, hey, maybe we should drop a NUKE on Yellowstone. You know, guys, the Bear TV station has been coming out with all this stuff. They were talking about the Poseidon, uh, so not, uh, Poseidon submarine. They call it the Armageddon submarine. This submarine uh, could, uh, could cause a hundred, what is it, a 1,640 foot wave. We're talking about a tsunami that could flood cities um now they're talking about yellowstone and it's it just a lot of stuff that the bear tv st uh station are putting out there like you know all this ideas how to finish off the sleeping giants all right so we're gonna see what's going on here guys and guys my next video is gonna be this one right here i forgot to post it i've been busy all day but this video is already set i'm gonna post it tonight uh you have the bear capital getting shelters ready uh, once again, uh, if you guys missed the notification on this one, uh, there was a huge announcement reason for WW3 from the bear. The bear said that the sleeping giant in that country hit targets inside their country. So, uh, those link, uh, this link will be in the comments box. This here is going to be for later on tonight. All right, guys, before I start, give this video. Uh, my name is Louis, and God bless every single one of you. Today is December 18, 2022, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. Guys, we have some huge information coming out, very important stuff here. Uh, starting December 21st, all the way to what, December 23rd, there's going to be some huge events that is going to impact the sleeping giant. Number one, multiple states will be on high alert. Just looking at this picture, guys, it's going to be massive cold. Uh, I do believe that there's a possibility there's going to be some blackouts. Now, we talked about this, guys. We talked about the uh, 
the blackouts and it's very important that people start getting stuff ready candles radios batteries make sure your phone are fully charged extra blankets and stuff We've been uh, warning many, many sleeping giants for the past couple of weeks that this thing is going to be hitting hard. Um, so not only that, guys, but we also have some breaking news updates. Texas declares a state of emergency. So you guys already know what's going on here. Uh, Texas uh, mayor has declared a state of emergency over, you know what, coming to the sleeping giant. Uh, so they're saying that the 42 could possibly end and that 42 could be lifted and we're talking about a flood could come into the sleeping giant. So the 21st all the way to the 23rd, actually, I think from here to the very end of December is going to be some huge event throughout the sleeping giant. All right, guys, before I start, give this. Hey guys, it's Watchron 101. Got a great video for you today. It is Hanukkah. It is the 18th. We are now in it. It is the 18th, December 18th, and 18 is 666. Six, six. six times three is 18. And, and this was made uh, a day ago, yesterday, the 17th, the Hanukkah's com conversation with the mayor. He is talking here with a mayor, and uh, there are some very unusual things going on here. You see, you have the two pillars here, <laughs> the two lights. Uh, and remember, Hanukkah is the festival of lights, the festival of light. A thousand uh, points of light is the, you know, a part of their order. They are always talking about a thousand points of light. And this guy right here is always lit up. You see the two lights right here, the two pillars of masonry. And uh, I, I left it right here because there's some very unusual things going on here. He has this glass here. I don't know why they have this glass here. Like he thinks that's going to protect him. But uh this is the mayor right here talking with the Yannicka, and there's also some unusual things going on over here as well. I, I think there's some manifestation stuff. I don't have the right technology to really bring this stuff in close. And again, this is this guy over here, but there's some very, you can go through the video here. There are some very uh, unusual things going on with this guy. I believe that he is the false prophet, but right now we are in Hanukkah. It is the Hanukkah, Yannicka is rising. And I looked and I couldn't find anything. Uh, they Right now, they don't work. They don't make videos. They don't do anything like that during, uh, I think, Hanukkah. So uh, this is the only thing that I have from him. There's nothing really new going on. But I found this very interesting yesterday that he is sitting here with the mayor talking about uh, cleaning up the oceans and the trees and all of this stuff. And so here's another one over here. This is, uh, he's over here playing. This is six days ago. He is uh, playing, he, again, the enemy, the devil, has, he it was uh, the seraphim. He was in heaven. Uh, he was the, the one that led the worship in Israel, in Israel, in, in heaven. I'm, I'm thinking about Israel. Sorry, guys. That he is, this is the Yannicka, um, Rav Shlomo Yehuda, pl uh, playing in front of the walls of Jerusalem. For him to be able to do that. It's uh, it's uh, unheard of. They don't allow just anyone to play like this to set everything up and have a big deal. So, but anyway, the enemy, the devil, has musical instruments uh, built inside of him, and it's pretty wild that this guy right here, uh, his grandfather Yehuda, he aliyad from Syria. So he has a Syrian. He's an Assyrian. Has Syrian roots. His he was born to elderly parents, just like John the Baptist preparing the way. That's why I really believe that he is the false prophet. He is the one preparing the way for the Antichrist right now. And I believe that uh, that we, we're watching right now. Also, uh, you know, this week they're not going to do a lot in the government. But right now, um, ne uh, Bibi Netanyahu has is forming his government. He's it's pretty much a done deal. The first time in three and a half years, five times, five five elections. Uh, there, ha you know, BB is putting together King BB is putting together his government, and this guy right here is preparing the way. Again, he was born to elderly parents. When his his dad died, they moved to Spain, so he has the revived Roman Empire roots as well. So this guy is an Assyrian. He is a Spaniard. 
And so he was, he's called the wanderer. He he wandered in Spain. So he is the wanderer. He has, John, he has John the Baptist, uh, uh, you know, roots. He is preparing the way for the antichrist right now. And for the first time, Bibi Netanyahu has all of the religious Jews supporting him. He's never had that before, not all of them. And they're all supporting him right now. They're forming the government as we speak, which is huge. It's very, very big. And so they're setting the government up right now in Israel. And remember, the Antichrist is going to rule from Israel. He's going to ru rule from Jerusalem. And again, this guy right here, the Yannicka, he is playing in front of the walls of Jerusalem. This is the third temple connection. And right now it is the 18th. We are in Hanukkah right now, the very beginnings of it. And so our eyes are fixed on this guy right here. I don't know if they're going to be putting up any videos with this guy. It's probably going to come afterwards because during Hanukkah, they, you know, they, I don't know. I don't think that they do a lot you know, you know, kind of like, you know, us, you know, you know, the, the people here I mean, during the holidays, we don't do a lot. We don't do a lot of filming and stuff, but maybe they will. But anyway, this is a huge, a huge connection here with, uh, with, uh, with, with Bibi Netanyahu and the Yannicka playing on the wall. You know, he's the Hanukkah Yannicka. And please comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, this guy right here is one to be watching. And I'm telling you, this is huge. I really believe that this guy right here, there's some really big things that are coming down the pike. And they're forming their government right now, which means one thing and one thing only, that they're gonna they're they are going to make their move because BB behind the scenes are promising these religious Jews all kinds of things. And the number one thing that they want, they want the Temple Mount. They want the Temple Mount back. Right now, for the first time in uh, in history that the Jews are are flooding the Temple Mount for the first time in his since two, you know for two thousand years, the you know they're they're flooding the Temple Mount. They're going up there and uh, they're wanting it back. So this guy right here is playing there at the, at the Temple Mount and preparing the way. And again, we need to keep our eyes on the Yanaka, you know, and the Yanaka. This is the newest thing right here. This was yesterday. And already has eleven thousand, has seven thousand subscribers. So a lot of people are watching this guy, and it's great because I believe he is the false prophet. And for me, right now, it is BB Netanyahu is is the is 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 the king. He is the king of Israel. He is. I believe that he's going to be crowned king after Hanukkah, maybe the beginning of the year, maybe afterwards. I don't know. But we need to be keeping an eye on on Israel because Israel is a timepiece for the church. We need to be watching, and uh, because I'm telling you, the revealing is 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 next on the list. The revealing is Second Thessalonians chapter two, because there's two things that have to happen before Jesus returns. Number one, the apostasy, the great falling away. We're you can check that box. We've been in that for quite a while. Next is the revealing. And right now, this guy right here is preparing the way for the Antichrist, whoever that is. It may not be King Bibi. It may not be Bibi Netanyahu. And again, the Yanaka on Hanukkah. So it could be somebody else. But he's preparing the way for somebody. And like uh, Sister Jesse said, the, 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 the world powers right now, they are raising up their Antichrist, whoever that is. And is, he is hidden. He is hidden. But the, the false prophet... Here he is, John the Baptist. He's going out and baptizing. He's preparing the way, right, like for Jesus. This guy right here is is the John the Baptist preparing the way for their Messiah, for their, you know, their um, Antichrist is replacing Jesus, for their Jesus, for their Isa. So I'm telling you, this guy right here is very significant, and I'm seeing a lot of videos. It's great. It's fantastic. But we, um, I'm telling you, we need to be watching this guy, especially right now. Now, during Hanukkah, the festival of light, look at the two lights there. Every, every, every video you see of him, he is lit up. He is lit up. He is like the light. He is like the, you know what I'm saying? So, but it, it, this guy right here for me is the false prophet preparing the way, but I could be wrong. This guy could be the antichrist, could be their Messiah. But um, for me, he's the religious one. He comes in like a sheep. He's humble. He is not a political guy at all. He is not a political guy. So I don't see him being the Antichrist. I could be wrong again, but I see that King Bibi Netanyahu, he is the political one. He has a lot of power. He is um, a 33rd degree Mason. He is connected. He has gone through the rituals. This guy is one to be watching. So both of these guys together would make sense, right? Would make sense. They're both Jews, super Jews. 
and they would be accepted by the Jews. And remember, they have they just had the Abrahamic they had the Abrahamic Accords right in front of Hanukkah. The Abrahamic Accords is the seventh, you know, the um, it is the seven year peace agreement. They're confirming that somebody's working behind the scenes there, and and so um, they had a COP twenty seven. They say that they crowned their king in Egypt. So there's a lot of things going on, guys, right now. I'm telling you, we need to be watching and uh, we need to be praying. And this, we are now fully into it. We are in the first day of Hanukkah. So be watching, be praying. And the reason why I'm excited about this is because they're revealing there's two things that happen before Jesus Christ of Nazareth returns. And that is the revealing. And once the revealing happens, it is just a matter of time that Jesus is going to come and snatch us out of here. So anyway, guys, I love you. God bless you. I'll cover you. Press the blood of Jesus. Please share this video. I appreciate you guys so much. And uh, please be praying for uh, Elizabeth and I, for Liz and I. And uh, please check out Liz's. Uh, she's been doing some live streams. Please go over to um, the Wallytron 101 Spanish channel. Liz has been putting up some live streams. Uh, please go over there, like, share, and subscribe um, to her and watch her videos. Uh, she's been doing a, a fantastic job. And that would be a huge blessing to her. That is her her baby over there. She's been doing live streams for the last couple of days. And she's been doing a fantastic job. And uh, so anyway, guys, I love you. God bless you. I'll cover you precious blood of Jesus. And I'm telling you guys, we are at the door, at the threshold right here. This guy right here is, we're in the festival of lights. And this guy is being lit up for all the world to see. So anyway, guys, I love you. Please, um, uh, I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for all of you that are supporting us. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany, for buying us a cup of coffee. You know, please, you know that's another way that you can support our ministry. People are ha having problems with, with, the, with different things here, you know, that we're putting up to help support us. You can uh, buy a cup of coffee for us. You know, that helps us out here with the ministry, online ministry, but it helps us here to uh, raise support for our feeding ministry. That is our goal starting next year. We're going to be jumping out into our feeding ministry. We're going to be starting a rescue mission here and, uh, so anyway, guys, thank you so much. Thank you for, for all of our new members. Thank you for those who are buying cups of coffee. Thank Louis and God bless every single one of you. Today is December 17, 2022, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. Guys, we have some huge information coming out, some very important stuff here, and it says shelters in the Bear Capital, apartment buildings, and shopping centers are being equipped. Also, guys, there is a, I guess there was an announcement that came out from the Bear leadership. Uh, it was a huge, uh, shocking decision. From the bear leadership so we're gonna see what's going on here guys uh once again for those of you that missed it i just posted this video not too long ago announcement reason for ww3 from the bear and this is what the bear said the sleeping giant and this land hit targets inside their territory so this link will be in the comments box if you guys want to check it out we also going to talk about this one here uh you have the yellow and blue country official gave a gift laced with uh oh uh oh to this country chief all right we're gonna see what's going on in this one here guys uh but the most important thing is please share the video if you can um follow me in my new channel the link will be in the comments box guys you got to follow me there just in case it come for this one um so again tomorrow will be patreon it's going to be absolutely free um and uh, thank you so much for the prayer. Continue praying for the channel, guys. Uh, we've been talking about what happened to the other one. And um, December 28th, I think it will be December 28th is when I'll be able to post in that one. All right, guys, before I start getting... Okay, guys, this is interesting. I know I seen it a day ago, uh, but it's really wonderful. I wanted to share it with you guys about the planets uh, before I get into um, Kiss, Kill Patrick message. And then we're going to get into missions and the Bible. So I'm not going to be here too long today. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. It's wonderful, people. Share this uh, 
Steve Fletcher put it together. Uh, and so share it. I think it's pretty neat. Uh, and another video is out too where another guy is talking about the same thing, but he's kind of giving more details in it. And I wish I can find it. I know I was looking at it yesterday, but I will put it in the description box if I find it. So let me go ahead and play this one here by uh, Steve Fletcher uh, about the planets, okay, and menorah. So let me go ahead and mute out again. Mute out again. I think this story goes along so good with everything can turn on a dime. I pastored in a distant state in the late 70s and early 80s, right before I went to Brownsville. I was 28 years old. And it was a big church, first church in the Assemblies of God to ever run a thousand in Sunday school. Pastor retired. Another pastor came in right after him and only stayed five months. And the church called me and asked me if I'd be willing to take the church. I was reluctant. I, I turned it down one time. They waited several years. They called me again and I went back. <clears throat> and I went for the first time and I pastored them. But it was, it was a very difficult time in my life. And uh, I was young. And I moved hundreds of miles away from what I was used to. I'm a Southerner. I moved up into the Midwest, different cultures, different lifestyles, different mentalities, even spiritually speaking. So I went there and I gave it my best. And I was really, God was really with me. It really anointed me powerfully. And um, boy, I had some very difficult things happen that was beyond my control. And this congregation really had a fighting spirit and there were some key people in the church that was really fighters. And um, they were aggressive and they were very religious. So they began to criticize my ministry. They began to criticize my family. They began to criticize the way I run a church. And they began to send me anonymous letters 
So finally, Brenda had a physical disorder and I took her to the hospital in Louisville and um, I had to take her over there for surgery that Thursday morning and they were going to do surgery on her and it was a pretty serious situation that she had. Uh, so, man, I had my hands full. I was fighting devils. I was fighting people. Now she's got a diagnosis where she had to have surgery. She had to have it quickly. I had to, my mother had to take care of the children. My mother had to help take care of me. I'm running a church. I'm fighting for everything I've got. And now she's got to have surgery. Nobody in the church offered to help. It was a big church. Nobody called about Brenda. I told the church to remember her in prayer. She's going to have to have surgery. Not one person called. Not any lady offered to come over and bring food. Nothing. So I went to church on that Wednesday night before she had to have surgery on Thursday. And I went in to preach. I could have easily taken off that Wednesday night and went on over to Louisville with her for the surgery the next morning, but I, no, I, went, I did my job. I went to church that night, and when I pulled up in the parking lot, there was uh, a man standing in the parking lot, one of my board members, and he said, could we see you tonight after service? I said, sure. So I went in and preached my heart out on Wednesday night. When I got through preaching, I went back to the conference room and met with them. They were all sitting there stone-faced. And when I walked in, I knew immediately that this was not going to be a good meeting. Well, the vice chairman of the board, I'm the chairman, you know, the pastor's always the chairman of the board, and you have a vice chairman. The vice chairman of the board spoke up, and he said, we want to say some things to you that we feel like you need to hear. I said, okay. They said, you're a misfit here. And you don't fit in. And we don't like you. That's what he said. We don't like you. And so I'm sitting there, 28 years old. And um, he said, matter of fact, we have all talked and we're going to cut your salary in half. So I said, okay. So they went on to the next person in the board meeting. And he was as vicious, if not more vicious than him. Said some horrible things. We don't like your mother. We don't like your wife. And we don't like your children. And my son had threw a snowball one Sunday night after church. Scott did. He threw a snowball and broke one of their stained glass windows, which was cheap anyway. <laughs> And they said, we don't like your children because you don't keep them under control. And boy, that's not the truth because men brothers always keep our kids under control. And so it went to the next guy and he said some equally vicious things and right around the table they all went. And then at the end, I just said, well, okay. I said, I've taken into consideration everything you've said. So I drove home to St. Wendell, Indiana that night where I lived. And I knew Brenda was going to have surgery the next day, so she's already asleep in the bed. Well, I got undressed, went to bed, lay there, put my hands behind my head, crossed my legs, and I just began to rehearse everything those guys said, and tears just began to roll out of my face. It was hurtful. I'm away from home. I'm away from my people that I understand and knows me and loves me. I'm in a strange place. I'm in a place where there's demons working alive. And those things have just attacked me, and they attacked my confidence. They tried to attack my confidence, but they didn't succeed. So I still knew who I was. So I lay there, and I began to think about all this stuff. And man, the tear just running down the sides of my face. And I'm thinking about her going in for surgery tomorrow. Don't know what they're going to find there. And... I'm looking at the clock, it's 11.15. I'm looking back at the clock, it's 12.45. I'm looking back at the clock, it's 
I still hadn't gone to sleep. Everything they said is just rehearsing in my head. And I just have hot tears running down my face. So I finally dozed off probably about four o'clock in the morning. And we had to get up at six, right about six o'clock. Well, I dozed off to sleep. And right at daybreak, I heard this. <laughs> and when we moved in that house, we didn't put any blinds upstairs in our bedroom because we had trees all around it. We just liked the nature. And so I didn't have any trees or blinds or curtains in my bedroom. And I heard the. <laughs> and I thought, well, what's wrong with Brenda? <laughs> I never heard her make them noises before. Maybe the surgery's going to do her good, you know. And so I heard it again, you know. It quit, and I heard it again. And I leaned up on my elbow, and I looked over at her, and she was just sound asleep. And I looked up at the window, and it was just turning daylight outside, and there was a snow-white dove at my window. And he had his little claws pinned on to the wood part of the window pane, and he was beating his wings against the window like that, looking in the bedroom. You know? He's got that little head going to looking in the bedroom. He was eavesdropping. He was, he was, boy, he was a boyer. He was, that's what he was. <laughs> looking right in the bedroom. Just go right in the bedroom at us. And as soon as I saw that dove, I said, it's over. Nothing had changed. Everything they said a few hours before still stood. I still remembered everything they said, but as soon as I saw that dove, it was like the Lord said, I'm going to turn this thing on a dime. It's not going to continue. It will not continue. As soon as I saw the dove, what the Holy Spirit was saying to me was, it's going to be okay. Go ahead and get her this surgery. Everything's going to be all right. And then after I saw the dove and I assimilated that and I started rejoicing, I said, woman, get up. Let's go get some surgery, praise God. Come on, woman, get up, get that self dress. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> so I drove her over to New Orleans, I mean to uh, Louisville. She got surgery. I went back to church on Sunday. Nobody ever called to check on Brenda. Nobody sent flowers. No concern whatsoever. I went in the church on Sunday morning. I preached like the house is on fire. I preached good. Come back that Wednesday night, preached great. Did good, did my job. In the spite of being hated, in spite of being mocked, in spite of being ridiculed and humiliated, I preached Sunday, Wednesday, the next Sunday, the next 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 Wednesday. The next Wednesday. The next Wednesday. I pulled in the parking lot after about two months and there was a board member standing in my parking lot parking place. When I pulled up, he said, could we see you at the service tonight? And my first thought was, my mama didn't raise no food. <laughs> so I said, yeah, okay. So I got through preaching that Wednesday night, went back to the conference room just like I did two months before. I walked in, and when I walked in, there were tears. And the vice chairman of the board spoke up and he said, Brother Kilpatrick, we owe you an apology. And I didn't say a word. And he said, you know what? He said, this church has been through a lot before you ever got here. And I think because you were young, we thought that we could sort of just spew on you what we was trying to say about the other ones that was here before you. I know it's no excuse, but would you please forgive us? And they went around the table, and every one of those men that said all those bad things, every one of them was crying and said, would you please forgive us? And when he came back around to me, I said, I forgive all of you. I forgive you totally. And then the chairman of the board said, we want to restore your salary. I said, yay. <laughs> All right. I went home, 
See, I didn't tell Brenda about that. So I didn't tell her when all that stuff was happening. I didn't want to worry her before her surgery. So I went home that night, went to bed, went sound asleep. Early the next morning, right at daybreak. I knew before I looked out what it was. That dove came twice. It came the morning after they broke my heart, and it came back the morning after they restored my heart. So, here's, here's what I want to say to all of you tonight, today. When I saw that dove, what the Holy Spirit was saying to me is, I've already turned this thing. You just can't see it yet. I've already turned it. So when I saw that dove, everything was done. I still had the enemies. They still meant what they said. But it was over right then. And so what I want to tell you today as I get ready to close, I'm going to give you these prophetic words. What I want to tell you today is this. <clears throat> God will send you signs when something is really bad, God's going to send you a sign. This thing's already turning. You just haven't seen it yet. Does that make sense? Those of you that's watching me by live streaming, I promise you that something is already happening in your situation where this thing is turning already and you just can't, you haven't had the optics to see yet exactly what God's doing, but it's already begun to turn. I have 10 prophetic words that I want to share, and these are some of the things that's about to change in some of your lives. The Lord says it's going to be a quick turnaround. The turnaround probably won't even make much sense, except God has melted the heart of someone very close to you. And as a matter of fact, he has been in the process of melting that heart for a long time but it came across as being hard-hearted, but it was melting all the time. The way you have known them and the way they have behaved, Holy Spirit said it's gonna be like they've had a spiritual heart transplant. They're gonna have a complete turnaround and a complete change towards you. Number two, just like the widow that was at the point of utter desperation in regard to the debt her husband had incurred, her sons were about to be taken away and auctioned off. And when she put that oil in the pan to fix that little cake for Elijah, everything turned at that moment when she put that oil in that little pan to use her last meal to cook the man of God a cake first. When she put that oil in the pan, everything turned right then and she couldn't even see it. But that act of obedience caused everything to turn right then. It just hadn't manifested yet. So I say to you, there's some of you right now, you've done what God has told you to do, and this thing turned weeks ago and months ago, it just hadn't manifested yet, but you're about to see the manifestation of it. And concerning this woman, when she put that oil in the pan before night, fall came, a miracle provision of oil took place, and she didn't have enough containers to contain the oil, and so that night she had money in the bank, whereas that morning she was losing everything, including her children, but that night she had money in the bank, which was oil in those jars, and it happened suddenly within 12 hours. God is rising up, and he's going to restore the debt that someone else made and left you responsible for. This woman's husband was part of the school of the prophets, and whenever he died, he left her holding the debt, even to the point of losing her own children. And there's someone that you've been left holding a debt that you didn't make, credit cards and other things. And the Lord says, I'm going to turn, and I'm going to turn this thing for you, and I'm going to see that things change because your faith has been rattled until you heard this message today. And the Lord said, be assured, it's going to turn for you quickly. Number three, 
When God gets ready to move, he does not need a lot of room to turn things around. He can turn things so quickly, it will be difficult to realize that things have changed so fast, especially with the demotion of someone that has made your life miserable. God is about to demote somebody that's in your life and they're not gonna be there much longer. And the person that's coming to replace them is gonna be a wonderful friend. Number four, I see court issues and I see insurance issues. And the Lord said he's gonna let this be resolved and it's gonna be resolved, it's been dragging out a long time, but he's gonna let it turn in the favor of the innocent. Before the gavel comes down, God said it will be over, it will be settled out of court. Number five, I see sickness and suffering lifting off of a loved one that's been afflicted for a long, long time. It's gonna happen suddenly and they're gonna get up as we saw in that vision, that dream that the Lord gave me. They're gonna get up suddenly and they're gonna be restored to health. Number six, I am seeing you coming out from under the hand of tyranny and intimidation and threats. When the blood was applied to the doorpost in the days of Israel while they were in Egypt, everything began to turn from that moment when they applied the blood to the doorpost. The waters of the Red Sea were already receiving the command from God to part as soon as that blood hit those doorposts. The Red Sea was already beginning to get prepared to part as soon as they obeyed God and put that blood on the doorpost and on the lentils. And it was all gonna happen suddenly. Number seven, I see that a very heart-wrenching diagnosis spoken over a family member will be revoked and a way will be made, or should I say a discovery will be discovered and tears of grief and heartbreak will quickly turn to tears of joy. Number eight, I see flashes of lightning and I hear peals of thunder breaking the spiritual drought that has almost paralyzed saints as they have been interceding and believing God for revival for their ministries and their churches. Groups and fellowships and prayer groups shall experience rain, even the latter rain of the Holy Ghost soon and it will be a suddenly, a refreshing rain on parched ground. I smell rain even as I'm reading this. Somebody shout amen. As soon as David took his brother's lunch in his hands and began the journey to get that lunch to those brothers, Goliath was already history. Things were turning on a dime. Goliath's heart was still beating but in God's mind, he was already dead. As soon as David received the lunch from his father to take to his brothers, Goliath was already a dead man. I wanna say this to you. Already while you're sitting here and you're loosing your faith, things have started to change already while you're loosing your faith. God said, the giant that stands in your way, your way of progress that stands in the way of things that have blocked your mind and hindered your mind and worried your mind, taxed your mind. That giant is staggering as I'm reading this. That giant is gonna fall and he's gonna fall quickly. When the giant falls, every other threat that stood with Goliath will run in fear and disbelief and you'll wonder, where are the enemies? Where are my enemies? Where are my threats? They're gonna disappear so quickly, you'll have to look for them. Number 10, you've been preparing and praying and laying aside what you can to make something happen. You desperately desire for this thing to happen, but the Holy Spirit's gonna turn this thing quickly because he's going to link you with a trustworthy golden connection. That individual that God's gonna link you with is gonna make things happen for you in such a way in an instant that you couldn't make happen in a lifetime. This is a Ruth and Boaz moment. You won't have to strain your mind to figure it out. It's gonna happen very quickly. 
here's what I want to leave with you today. Sometimes things may look like they're on a set course and it's going to develop on that set course and that's the way it's always going to be. Not so. Because what God's going to do is he's going to turn this thing for his glory. And already, already, while I'm standing here talking about this, I knew how it was going to be when I got up here today and started talking about this because it's going to get your wheels spinning. And I'm going to say one thing that's going to kick off something else in you. I can't specifically talk about everybody's specific situation. But when I've been talking about certain things, it's kicked off certain thoughts in you. But I just want to tell you this. I want you to leave here with the confidence today. 2023 is going to be a different year. God bless you. All right, guys, I had to play that Kilpatrick message. I just thought it was very fitting for myself, if nobody else. Uh, but, uh, wow, that just really touched me today when I heard it. And I know sometimes Yeshua, he put things in my face just for me to see. And so I thought I would share it with you guys because a lot of ministries are out there. A lot of people are doing ministries. I have missionaries working all over the world. I have other people who support our channel. We have different people who are uh, really going through struggles. I've been going through my little struggles with family this year. A lot of things, uh, like you said, uh, paying other people debt and doing all kind of things. Uh, and I don't know what you guys have been going through, but I'm looking forward to uh, something Yeshua is going to do for his people this year, I know. And that's why I'm going to get over to, um, we're going to be getting into Revelation 12 right now because the wilderness experience, I think, is upon us. And with all these things coming on the earth, uh, we just have to put our trust in the Father. That's it. Put our trust in the Father. No matter what it look like, tastes like, feel like, you just have to know and believe that he is the great I am, I am that I am. He is the great God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you have to just trust in him, people. Believe in him. I'm telling you, I, I just been believing him since I was 16 when I became born again. And I've uh, been going through all kind of problems with people and this and that. And you can name it. But he has always been there for me, always delivered me, always blessed me. And so uh, <laughs> I, I love his message. I love his message. So I hope you will share it with other people. Uh, we're going to go on over here and uh, get into Feed My Sheep today from uh, the brother over in uh, Asa Gain. is a powerful missionary over in Bangladesh. Uh, very powerful guy, worked very hard, always working hard, always asking me to pray for him when he go out, when he go out, when he go out. Uh, so we're going to play his video now, short video, and we're going to get into the Bible. Um, Revelation uh, 12. Uh, so if you want to get your Bibles out and join us with Revelation 12, that'll be fine. So I'm already here. At, how many minutes? <laughs> hour, hour and three minutes. So I'm not going to be here too long like my regular, or my regular video, hour and a half, hour, 13 minutes, whatever. So let's go ahead and uh, mute this out now and play it and get into the Bible.
Okay, praise the Lord. Those brothers work really hard. I mean, sometimes they go out at night because they avoid the enemy, you know, the enemy from uh, bothering them and stuff like that more. So sometimes they work in the night. Uh, but uh, we need to pray for all the missionaries in uh, Bangladesh and uh, India, uh, Africa, uh, all over in uh, Pakistan, Bang uh, and also in Pal uh, the Philippines. The Philippines, uh, we have a lot of missionaries uh, scattered all over. Uh, through Feed My Sheep Today, End Time Dream and Vision, Uptime uh, with Bob. Barbara is uh, responsible for and doing a great work. Uh, just pray for him always to continue doing a great work, uh, raising funds for the missionaries, and also helping out with my ministry all the time, Feed My Sheep, uh, also Fill My Cup Ministries, I mean. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get into uh, the Bible. Uh, Father, we're going to get into the Bible here, Revelation 12. Because it's kind of reflecting on what's going on right now. We have all the planets lined up. Uh, amazingly so, uh, all the planets are lined up as we're into Hanukkah, the eighth day. Uh, we had just ended one here, but they're getting into another Hanukkah in Jerusalem. Uh, so we watching, we are watching this guy they call the, uh, the Yanaka and all the things going on. I don't know what can happen. I just know all these brothers are working together, working together for the one world system and we have to be very careful and pray, people, right now. Pray that you do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Because you know, if you have a personal relationship with the Father, you should know that His Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, Haya, He is the only Messiah. So uh, we need to be getting that right, getting that in our head, getting that in our brain, reading your word, reading the Torah, uh, walking in the uh, light of Yeshua, because it's no other God, no other king, no other one going to ring but Him. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the only one. So, uh, Father, be with us as we go to Revelation 12. Thank you so much for it. Thank you so much for this video. Uh, be with us now, Father, and the Holy Spirit to come be with us in Yeshua's name. So go ahead and you can read uh, Revelation 12. If I have a comment, I'll say something. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Okay. Revelation 12, mm -hmm. starting verse 1. A great sign was seen in heaven. A woman clothed with a sun and with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars mm -hmm. was on her head. Mm -hmm. She was pregnant and she was crying out in birth pains in the anguish of childbirth. Then another sign was seen in heaven. Look, there was a huge red dragon that had seven heads and 10 horns and there were seven crowns on his heads. His tail swept away a third of the stars in heaven and hurled them down to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she gave birth, he would devour her child. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who would rule all the ethnicities with an iron rod. Her child was snatched away to Yehoah and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where Yehoah 
had prepared a place for her so she could be taken care of for 1260 days. Hmm. Now there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But the dragon was not strong enough to win, so there was no longer any place in heaven for him and his angels. That's a good thing. Hmm. The great dragon, that old serpent called the devil or Satan, who deceives the whole world, was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven. Now have come the salvation, the power, the kingdom of Yahuwah, and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, the one who accused them before Yahuwah day and night. Mm. They conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they did not love their lives even to death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and all who reside in them. But woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with terrible anger because he knows he only has a little time. That's right. That's what's going on right now. We got all these things happening, developing. Uh, so we are right at the end, people, of the end. And we need to be really uh, uh, cautious. And I'm telling you, Yeshua said he wasn't going, he wasn't going in the desert. He wasn't going in the secret chambers. He wasn't going to be in a building. Uh, you know, he's coming on with his, all the hosts of heaven going to come with him. The holy angels when he come, his feet won't touch the ground, people. We we not to be deceived with these false messiahs and prophets rising. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. When the dragon realized he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she would fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness. Right. This was the place where she would be taken care of for one year, two years, and a half a year. Two and a half uh, years. Three and a half years? Yep, that one? Three, yep, and three and a half years. Three and a half years. That's what we are going to, God's people, 144,000 may be part of it. I don't really know how it's all going to tail out, but I just know that we are going to, if you are God's person and you're alive on this planet, you're going to probably be in the wilderness. A wilderness experience, as I know Carrie get in talk about sometime too, the wilderness experience. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. For three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Out of the serpent's presence. Yep. The serpent poured water out of his mouth like a river that he would make a flood to sweep her away. But the earth helped the woman. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon was pouring out of his mouth. Hmm. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war with the rest of her descendants, the messianics who obey Yahuwah's commandments and hold to the testimony of Yeshua Messiah. And woman in prophecy means church, so it's talking about a Pacific people that belong to Yeshua uh, going to be out in the wilderness. Uh, He's going to gather his people. I had my own dream about that once, but uh, you know, guys, please be standing the message. Stand in your Bible, having a personal relationship with Yeshua, because this is time is really going before us really quickly. I'm going to get on out of here because I told you I didn't want to be over this too much, too long. But let me get over to Maranatha. It's an excited message that I haven't even uh, heard myself, I don't think. Uh, only one reminder, only one reminder of sin, only one reminder of sin was given to me today. So we're going to go ahead and play that one and we're going to let you guys go. Uh, let me go ahead and mute it out again. December 6, only one reminder of sin. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Proverbs 11:31. The wicked receive their recompense in the earth. Proverbs 11:31. They shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. Malachi 4.1 Some are destroyed as in a moment, while others suffer many days. All are punished according to their deeds. The sins of the righteous, having been transferred to Satan, he is made to suffer not only for his own rebellion, but for all the sins which he has caused God's people to commit. His punishment is to be far greater than that of those whom he has deceived, after all have perished who fell by his deceptions, he is still to live and suffer on. In the cleansing flames, the wicked are at last destroyed, root and branch. Satan the root, his followers the branches. Satan and all who have joined him in rebellion will be cut off. Then the wicked shall not be, yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. They shall be as though they had not been. Psalm 37.10 and Obadiah 16. The justice of God is satisfied, and the saints and all the angelic hosts say with a loud voice, Amen. While the earth is wrapped in the fire of God's vengeance, the righteous abide safely in the holy city. 
upon those that had part in the first resurrection, the second death has no power. Revelation 20, verse 6. While God is to the wicked a consuming fire, he is to his people both a sun and a shield. Psalm 84, 11. The fire that consumes the wicked purifies the earth. Every trace of the curse is swept away. No eternally burning hell will keep before the ransom the fearful consequences of sin. One reminder alone remains. Our Redeemer will ever bear the marks of his crucifixion. All that was lost by sin has been restored. God's original purpose in the creation of the earth is fulfilled as it is made the eternal abode of the redeemed. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. Psalm 37, 29. I don't know whose side you want to be on, people, uh, but we need to be getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. As we are in the uh, Shanukah right now in Jerusalem, we're Hanukkah. watching things, uh, Hanukkah. Uh, and so, uh, but you know, a lot of things are going on, but the Father has it all in control. Uh, I just hear, heard today that a, a meteor is on our way uh, here tonight. I heard a meteor was on the way or something like that. So we got a lot of things in the galaxies going on as well. I showed you the planets all lined up. Uh, and they saying now Yellowstone is being threatened uh, by Russia. we got all kind of things going on. But we have to put our trust in the word. And the living king who is going to live forever and forever. Uh, you need to be giving your life to Messiah Yeshua. So uh, I know he absolutely is the light of the world. I love it so much. He is the light of the world. Uh, and so we need to be giving our life to him alone, people. So uh, we're going to go ahead and let you guys go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close my close out. Uh, I don't know if you want to say something there, but uh, we just need to know, boy, we are going through these things so quickly. Uh, it's time to get ready, get ready, to stay ready, to be ready, be prepared, be prepared. <clears throat> yeah, this is a fundraiser we got going. Uh, if you'd like to help, mm -hmm. go to Kobo.com and search for Son of Man Bible. Buy as many as you want. Um, for every one you buy, we'll uh, hopefully get about $2 each. <laughs> so if you want to buy one, that'd be great. You want to buy 10, you want to buy 100, buy 1,000, however, whatever you can afford, that'd be great. But it's always free on our website. You can read it for free and you can download it for free. But if you want to help with our fundraiser, go ahead at Kobo.com and buy a copy. Okay, so uh, I want to thank you guys for all your help today, all through the year, all through the other years all your offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, those that need a mission fields. May Yahuwah richly bless each and every one of you guys. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, FMCMI alternative channels are rumble.com, bitshoot.com, facebook.com, uh, fmcmi.org, our blog and our website. Uh, you can donate at our website as well, but you can donate at Cash App as well. Uh, and also a digital business card. Uh, and then also other donation options, like I just mentioned, fmcmi.org, marna.cam at gmail.com at PayPal. Uh, mailing your donations at Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. Shipping address, Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. Uh, hashtags are there on the screen. Uh, uh, click subscribe, like bell. Click the like button. Click the notification bell. So I really appreciate all of you watching today. I appreciate it. I had to just come say hello and let you guys be encouraged because I'm telling you all these things are going on around us right now. But don't forget to give to the homeless. Uh, give to the people in need in your neighborhoods. Uh, like I always tell people, a $10 go a long way. Uh, I've been helping, uh, you know, we've been giving out the, uh, we've been giving out the, uh, money uh what is the point of the arrow here uh the, the food cards you know we give out wendy's i think we use because the people kind of at the park are more closer to wendy's than they are to some of these other outlets but um we give out those because a lot of people now with the drug scene going on guys i'm telling you so many people into drugs right now so we prayed about it and we stopped giving out cash but we get out give out food cards give out blankets give out tangible things that people can use this time of year uh, hand warmers and socks or, uh, you know, whatever we can give out. So, uh, and clothes. so we, yeah, so we just thank you guys for all your Stop. help to make this thing uh, uh, happen. And we do give out water all the time, constantly, every week, water, because they always need water. Sometimes the parks cut the water off and they don't have even have time to get to a water fountain. 
So uh, just be praying for the homeless in your areas and contributing much as you can, when you can. And we really appreciate each and every one of you. So I'm going to go ahead and let my husband pray and let's go because it's already an hour and 20 minutes. So um, I really just want you guys to know that soon and very soon Yeshua is coming. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and just put up uh, this here. Uh, He's the light of the world because I love this song about walking the light. You know, uh, I couldn't find it. I don't know if I can play it, but I love that song. Walking the light, beautiful light, Jesus, the light of the world. Uh, but anyway, guys, um, go ahead and pray. And uh, we really appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. Stay out of trouble. Please don't be getting drinking and driving and whatever you do. I don't know, but watch yourself. Pray, cover yourself with spiritual warfare when you go out, when you go in, people. It's time to really be be serious about your life, about your salvation, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and let you go ahead and close out. Father, we thank you for everybody who gets to view the video. Father, thank you for Hanukkah. Yes. Thank you that we can dedicate ourselves to you and yes. cleanse our temple. Mm -hmm. This is a great week for rededication of our lives yes. to you, Father. We just look forward to everything mm -hmm. you're going to do mm -hmm. in us and through us in this next year. In Yeshua's mm -hmm. name, amen. Amen, amen. So, guys, I'll see you when I see you again. Probably Tuesday. Never know. I'll never know when you might see me. <laughs> you never know. Well, I'm watching things in Yellowstone. I'm watching and praying for Russia, all the stuff going on with Russia. Uh, so, guys, be praying for your families. Stay prepped. Stay prepped. Keep a, don't be in the house. And uh, I have to hear that you didn't have a light. You didn't have uh, You didn't have water. You know, you need to keep prepped, okay? I hear people saying when disasters break out, oh, I got to go out and get water. I got to go out and get this. I got to go out and get that. You better get it now. You better have it now. You better have it now, people. Because there may come a day when you can't go out and get it, Okay. So have these things ready, all these things ready, okay? So I'll see you guys. I love you guys so much. And we're going to say happy Hanukkah and uh, have a wonderful holiday season. I love you guys so much. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Bye -bye. Hanukkah. <laughs>